Hey everybody, you might wonder what all this stuff has to do with art. Well, today we're going to play with things that you can find around your house. And we're going to mostly do acrylic paint. And basically we're going to do some scraping and scratching and drawing and whatever we feel like doing. We're going to play a little bit. So um, everybody has one of these jars or a tin or a drawer filled with all kinds of random stuff. Here's a few things. I like to look for shapes, different textures, see how thin that is. That's a good flat surface. Um, what a cool shape, texture. This is actually from, I think, garlic or something like that. Um, so that's a cool texture. We're gonna do some stamping. We're gonna do some dragging. Anybody else remember these from when they were a kid? You can get most of the stuff at the Dollar Tree or you already have it for free hanging around and you're about to throw it away. So um, this is actually a little plastic that goes over the end of a um, paintbrush. So if you buy a little bit higher end paintbrushes, you might have these little tubes. Obviously a penny, this is just a nail, toothpick and a skewer. You get these with all the screws whenever you get a package of screws with something that you're hanging on the wall and nobody ever uses them. So it's a great circle. Everybody's got pop. Um, got these. This is really fun. You, your old um, gift cards or hotel room keys you can use to scrape paint and put other, other things. Good old fashioned rubber band, plastic silverware, a straw, which we can use to pick up liquid and drop it. Same thing with this, or you can Make little shapes, or we can draw with it. Um, did I miss anything? Oh, and a good old-fashioned stick. How the how the kids used to do it in the dirt. So I think that's pretty much everything in there. Oh, and this is obviously most people you know this. It is a um, wine cork. I don't drink wine, but my daughter does. So I have a few of these around. So this morning I just drew a little heart. Used a kitchen knife, a sharp little kitchen knife, and basically made it a stamp. So we'll see how that works out. I haven't used this one yet, so. Um, and a bobby pin, another way to draw. It's got two spots where you can kind of have a little bit more of a rounded edge. Same thing here. You can also drop these into the paint. Well, apparently all of that, that I just did didn't record. So here's a quick splash of what I did do. Guess which ones are which? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to grab two more fresh pieces of paper and we will do some more demonstrating again so you can actually see what makes what textures. Thanks. Okay, let's get some paint down and get this party started. So I'm glopping this on kind of thick at first. And the major reason is because I'm going to start with dipping some stuff that I want to pick up the paint. Okay, so this is the... Um, hair roller dip that down and transfer the paint over to here there is a little bit of texture in there definitely looks cool on this side you can definitely write with your with your um, stick with your toothpick With your skewer on the, this is the, the flat end. This is kind of tearing up the paper a little, so I don't love the skewer. I might just be giving it a little too much pressure, but don't love that. Um, the knife. It's a great texture and picks up the paint so you can transfer it over. The toothbrush, you can use it to brush the paint and add a little texture that way. Rubbing a little off. It's an interesting pattern over there. We have another thing to do with the toothbrush in a minute. That I'll show you. This was the. Um, this is actually from I think a big, big bag of potatoes. But that is a nice, cool texture. These are two separate lines, different thicknesses. Just kind of neat. And again, I've got that paint over here, so I can use it somewhere else too. 
that. Um, this is the bottle cap. Or the other side. Give it a little spin. Paint's already starting to dry, so different effects whether the paint's dry or wet. And that's also going to affect based on where you live, too. If you live in a damper area or a drier area, it's going to affect how quickly your paint dries. This is an interesting, I wanted to try this. Totally an experiment. This might be better with a little bit wetter paint. Because if you can see, there's some little swirlies in there. Let's just try a little bit of paint here. That is kind of cool. I have a nickel too. It works a little different. Obviously, roll the nickels, get the paint off the edge. There you go. Um, uh, this is another. This again was that comes with your screws, so you can mount them into the wall. It's not called a molly. You can't remember what it's called. But if you dip that guy into the wet paint. And he's a thick head, so you can dry out with him too. Kind of gives a little extra shadow, which is kind of neat. And glass jar. If you go to hotels and they give you the little mayonnaise, ketchup, and mustards in these little jars. These are great jars. I like the size of that circle. And this is the cap that goes on to, that comes with some of the nicer paintbrushes. So, dip that in the paint, make some little circles, and again, you could draw with this too. You can draw with pretty much anything that has a an end to it, and you can grab your hands around. And again, we're going back to the. Uh, this is actually a finish nail, so I like this better than the skewers because I don't feel like I'm destroying anything with it. And you can do the tinier point, which gives you a little bit more, a more a smaller, precise, finer line. And I, I definitely like the finish nail. This is a cool one too. I like how this looks. Let me throw a little bit more paint on here so you can see. double which is pretty cool and you can dip things in there to get the shape don't love that sometimes it's a fail did that I did it with the brush because the last time when I did it I used my fingers and ended up with fingerprints in there so I didn't love that but so if you don't mind fingerprints or getting paint on your fingers too I don't mind that okay I'm gonna swipe back over this again and some nice little swirlies in the paint so a lot of this texture, depending on how thick it is when you do your, putting all your marks in there, it will dry and become much more obvious. And then once it does dry, you can actually go back in and add paint of a different color over it, which is pretty cool. And um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to show you with those. No. Okay. So... Let me just, it's not quite dry enough. Let me put this on pause and let it dry a little bit. Okay, so I painted this earlier. This is actually um, 
I went to Bentley University and they send these, the, the Observer magazine out monthly, quarterly, not really sure anymore. Can't remember the last time I got one actually. And it's a nice thick paper, but I do um, glue two sheets together and it's a great base for a freebie journal. They have some really cool imagery. So in some cases I sort of save the images and this is like really base paint. So I would definitely do more layers of paint over this. So um, I added this blue a little bit earlier and it's all nice and dry. So I want to just show you something else. I am going to use the white this time. And I will spread it with this because it's okay. And I want to show you that when you have another color underneath, you can scrape and have that color come through in the texture. So that blue comes through. And use your credit card. You can do similar things. And otherwise, you can give it a little pull when you do it. Or you can, just, you can actually just use a credit card to spread out your paint. And here's another. This is the end piece. When you have these little plastics, I just cut the end so I can not only use this as a brush, but I can use this end as well. And this, so it has, and it'll give you three totally different looks. So if I dip in with this, you'll see the texture. But if I use the other end, it's going to be much more dramatic because I can, it's much more bunched together. And then if we do this, and then use this itself as the texture. It ended up lumpy bumpy <laughs> now this can depending on what you do so now I have a little bit more pressure here so hopefully that will give me a little bit more of a, a little bit different texture this might carry over carry that paint so that's another way I, I kind of like that better actually to have that carry the paint over again I'm getting very messy so you can wear rubber gloves when you do this so you don't get paint all over yourself I don't mind the paint it comes off so bubble wrap this is like a crafter's favorite tool first you get to pop all the bubbles but then you get to use this to put some great texture on pages and this texture is in here and it will be wherever i put it as well And of course, there's that. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to show you another thing you can do is spritz water. Which right now you're not really seeing. I don't know if you can see that texture. It's definitely changed the image a little bit. Changed a little bit. And I'm going to... This is gauze. And let's carry that texture over someplace else because I picked it up. And there's your texture from the gauze. And what else do I have over here? I have my food, but I'm going to do that on a fresh page. I'm just going to throw a couple of hearts in here. A couple, few, I can count. Really, I need to fix this a little bit. It's a little flat in one spot, but it's free. Um, okay, 
let me swap this out and I will go back and show you a few more things. Okay, so here's another page and I'm just gonna throw some black on here. This guy clearly needs to be covered up a lot. Go back on that side and I'm gonna throw my gloppy yellow on this side. Spread it out. This is super gloppy. Cover the words up. It's gonna keep them. Change your mind. Okay, that's still really gloppy. Here's one fun thing I like to do to add texture. This is saran wrap, basically. So you can just put that on. leaves a cool texture. Notice it's got some nice texture on here. I'm going to put that over on this side now. Get that paint off of there. Voila. Notice how it actually picked up some of the yellow. I could go back and do it over on this side again and probably transfer some of that yellow over here. What I can do is let this dry, leave it here, and then peel it up later as well. But I'm not going to do that for now. So there we go. Be careful of this mess now. And right into the trash. You can also do it like this to create other texture too. Or use a plastic sandwich bag in a similar fashion so you can keep your hands on the inside. Okay. I wanted to show you some of the texture from earlier. A little bit closer up because the video wasn't great. So these little marks here are from the red um, fiber, the onion or garlic wrap or whatever it was and this was from the gauze and this was after I took that fiber the onion wrapper and I I reprinted with it because this was off screen so I couldn't show you that and obviously that's that same thing with a little bit of bubble wrap that's actually from my cork stamp And this was, um, the drawing is later, but underneath was when I, um, when I used the bubble, when I was, um, using that same thing, the, the red fiber, just dipping it in, trying to get it to show a texture, which clearly it showed some texture, but not what I was expecting. And obviously those hearts were drawn in with, um, I think I used the, I don't know what I used. I'll have to go back and look in the video. So you will have just seen the video, so you probably know better than me. And that was the from the fork and obviously that's the bubble wrap and you can see those horizontal lines in here are also left over from when I did the fork the first time here's just another view showing the black page where I use the um, saran wrap the plastic wrap and I went over on this page as well because it was originally had the red. I painted over it in yellow and then I put some of that black on top using the saran wrap from the other side. It's interesting how this almost looks green over here, which is probably because whatever was underneath it before as well as the mixing of the yellow. Okay, Joanne, this is for you. Um, I am going to try a few of the texture techniques with aluminum foil. So there's, I have a couple of thoughts here. 
Um, first of all, it already has a ton of texture because when I took it out, I folded it and I got a little messed up. So just from that, it already has cool texture. So take anything that has a little bit of texture. Here, the, this is um, um, one of those foils. I think it was around onions, but it could have been, they have them around fruit, whatever. They all kind of have different textures. It's pretty simple for that. Literally put it underneath and just give it a good rub. That gives a really cool texture. Okay, that's a nice simple one. Let's try the bubble wrap because you have. Well, I've already used it for paint. Let's see if that works. Subtle. You might be able to see more if you. You can see that a little bit. It's better with things that are a little bit harder. So I have. Let's see. Let's try a little bit of rice. Just throwing a little rice under there. Same thing. I'm just going to rub over it. Not quite what I expect, but definitely a texture. Um, you can definitely do any, you should be able to do any kind of object. So let's try a paper clip. Put that under there. That's going to hold up the texture. Coins. Nothing else, you get little circles. I'm sure if we tried really hard, we could get, there you go, you can actually get the impression of the Presidente. Is that a president? I should know that. Somebody school me. Jefferson, I think that's Thomas Jefferson. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, let's see, this is a necklace chain, which is definitely a teepee because I've dipped it in paint before. And look at that, I ripped the paper. This is actually a fairly heavy duty paper too, so. That'll work. Let's see what else did I include in your kit. So you can, if I would say if you want to do scraping, then maybe put something underneath it like a reasonably flat napkin so you have something more soft underneath it so it has a little bit of give. So you can do that. This one you want to be careful if you use something like the, um, the nail because it could probably cut a hole easier. So definitely I wouldn't use the sharp part of it. So that'll work. Um, let's see what else was in the kit. I showed you the fork, showed you the nail. This was not in the kit, but this might be a cool thing to use for texture. In the paint, it was really neat because you get a double line. So you could um, put a K for Cassie, let's say, and you get a nice double letter. These little tubes give you some little circles. So you can add texture that way. Let's see what else is in the kit. Sorry, I, my desk is a mess right now. My table. Um, the cards, you can actually use it to smooth stuff, but you can also use it to add texture. Or again, if you have something that has texture and you want to wipe out a part of it, you could do that. Well, you can a smoothing technique. Let's see what else was in the kit. I feel like I'm missing something. Um, that must be it. Either that or I'm lying. So I apologize in advance if I am. But basically anything you can use to make a texture, you can use. And again, like I said, the key is to have a little bit of something soft and flat underneath it. So this I have this other napkin that has texture. So if you have a napkin with texture, it might pick up the texture. It depends on how good the text, how distinct the te how bumpy the texture is. So in this case, it's not picking up the texture. So this guy would work as well. And actually, by having that napkin underneath, makes the smooth out process work a little better too. So that's the other thing to be careful of is when you put it in your book. 
if somebody rubs on it a lot, there's a good chance that your texture on your foil will go away. So it might behoove you to make sure that you build some kind of a frame around it that gives it a little bit of extra height that will, when the book is closed, so you'll have something around it. So when the book is closed, it will not allow the other pages to flatten onto it and therefore make your texture go away. Something else you can probably do, let me just do a quick experiment here, is to put a little paint, dry brush a little paint, whether you use your finger or whatever, on top of the foil, because that will pick up the texture. Even if I wipe this off now, which I'm gonna try, I think the as long as you're gentle, now if when that dries your texture is going to stay on the foil so that's another thing to play with and this is kind of cool I like it up here. it's a different way to play with paint and texture. Have fun! Got some close-ups of the texture that we got from the um, with the foil, playing with the foil and then again I added the paint on top of it. So that's that mesh bag right there. And there's your paper clip. My nickel. Sorry, I can't see that very well because of the light. And then some of this was scraping. That was that little tiny jar. That was the, is that the knife? The fork, maybe? And then this was just a little bit of drawing. That was the straw. Oh, and so, yep, yeah, so there you go. Oh, this was the bobby pin. The double lines were from the bobby pin. And you can see that texture. That was from when I did the chain. So you could actually see the chain. There's some more up here, some interesting texture. And then I think over here, I want to say that is from the rice right there. So you, like I said, you could see a little texture, but it wasn't super. Definitely wasn't what I expected.